name is Dana and I'm an educator at OMSI and today I'm going to show you the experiment Dye Detective. So what we've got here are some pieces of filter paper. The kinds of filters you can use include coffee filters, you can get them just at a grocery store. Um, so you can get them, you can cut them up into pieces like this or in the long strips like this. Um, for the longer strips it works better if you have two inches by four inches. The book says three but you can get a longer and more complete separation of four inches. So here we have a whole array of markers that you can use for your experiments. There's lots of things you can find around the house or around school. The last four here are all permanent markers. They of course will not work with uh, water as your solvent, but they may work with alcohol as your solvent. Uh, label your filter paper with different boxes uh, using a pencil. You do have to use a pencil for this step. So label your filter paper with a pencil and then you can color in the boxes with uh, the different kinds of markers. We have our markers labeled with different numbers so we can identify them easier. So this one we have 2, 4, 7, and 12. And a similar one here for the longer strips we have from rows 2, 4, 7, and 12. And it should be a little bit away, about a half an inch away from the edge of the paper so you have some room. Use all sorts of solvents to develop your uh, dye detective strips of paper. You can use, we have a bottle of water, we have a bottle of 70% isopropyl alcohol. We have a bottle of 99% isopropyl alcohol. Each of the solvents will react differently with the dyes, so you will get different uh, separations with using each of these solvents. So to develop your markers, we'll take the cup and carefully pour a little bit of water into it. You don't need very much. One of the problems with this experiment is that you do have to leave enough room to have the paper get wet but not the ink. You don't want to get the ink wet otherwise the ink will start to flow backwards and that's one of the ways this experiment can get messed up. So if you have the um, angled filter paper you can actually just put it in the cup by itself and it'll sit there on its own like so. And you let it sit for a little while and it'll develop. For these it won't sit on its own so take pen or some other thing like that, and you'll tape your filter paper to the pen. Like this. So now it'll hang on its own. As you can see, I've got the two kinds of filter paper in the cups. So this is the angled one for the younger kids, and this is the long strip for the older kids. And you can see that the water in the cup only touches the paper and should not touch the ink spots. So now comes the part where you just have to be a little bit patient. So you're going to wait for about 5 to 15 minutes, depending on how clean you want your separation. The longer you let it run, the better your colors will be. So here are some examples. These are the same markers that we ran earlier, but in the three different solvents. So this one was run in water, this was in 70% isopropyl alcohol, and this one was in 99% isopropyl alcohol. And it's the same four markers, but you can see how different the chromatograms are. Also notice that Number 12 in the water didn't run because it's a permanent marker, but it did start to run in the two alcohols. Numbers 2, 4, and 7 are advertised as washable markers, therefore they work better when there's more water in the solvent. So they work really well in uh, the water, mostly well in the isopropyl alcohol, and not very well at all in the 99% isopropyl. Part of your advanced preparation uh, on page G3 in the book uh, one of the things you can do is have a clue paper. So if you're setting up your experiment as a mystery, you can pass out pre-made clue papers like this to your students, and then when they run their chromatography, they, they will develop uh, patterns that look something like this. In this case, you can see that the clue paper matches uh, our marker number two. One of the extensions, uh, extension A, has an experiment where you can measure the RF value, it's a retention factor value, for the ink. And what it does is it compares the total distance that the ink traveled compared to how far a particular ink traveled. So we're going to measure how far the ink traveled for the, uh, the red ink. The distance that the, that the water traveled is about 35 millimeters, and the distance that the red ink traveled is about 25 millimeters. You calculate the RF, you divide distance A by distance B. So on page G13 in your book, you'll notice that there is a typo. The diagram is mislabeled, and uh, it has uh, A and B switched. So if you go to the website, you'll be able to download new pages for your book so that the diagram is correct.